A little over a year ago, I did a series of videos about MQTT and Home Assistant. Plus, I've covered MQTT in a few of my project builds as well. Well, as is usually the case, each video results in some questions that aren't answered in that video, which leads to the creation of yet another video. So in this video, I'm going to do a simple abridged version. It's not going to go into depth, but it will cover the highlights of using MQTT and Home Assistant. And in each case, I'll point you towards the best video if you want to dig into a particular topic in more detail. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. As always, remember you can find links to everything down in the video description. But let's start out by covering what is MQTT and how does it work. MQTT is a fast, lightweight, and efficient communication protocol to wirelessly send and receive small amounts of data. Now, you aren't going to send things like video or audio, but sensor data, entity states, and simple control commands are easily sent. This makes it ideal for low power devices like ESPs and other microcontrollers. It is supported in virtually all modern programming languages, including Python, Arduino C++, Java, Node-S, Rust, and many others. And of course, there is full integration with Home Assistant. MQTT consists of a broker, which works much like a post office, routing messages between clients. Clients can either send or publish data, or receive and subscribe to data, or both via connection to the broker. Clients will only receive the data to which they are subscribed. Now, there are many flavors of brokers, but Mosquito is one of the most common. It is free and open source, and it can be run under Windows, Mac OS, Linux, in a VM, or in a Docker container. It can run on something as small as a Raspberry Pi, or really any machine that can remain on, and is ideally connected via Ethernet to your network. In fact, Home Assistant can also be your broker, completely eliminating the need for a separate machine. Now, if you're completely new to MQTT, you may wish to watch this video for more information, including definitions on things like topics, payloads, retained messages, and more. This video will provide you with a good base for actually implementing MQTT in your own projects. But why use MQTT, and when might you want to consider using it? One of the primary reasons to use MQTT is to provide a Home Assistant integration of your device when there isn't a native integration. This could be when building your own devices and writing your own custom code, which of course will not have a built-in Home Assistant integration, or it might be a situation where you flash custom firmware to get your retail device out of the cloud for local control. And some manufacturers may even provide MQTT built in as a local control and integration option. Now it's important to note that Home Assistant does not come with MQTT enabled out of the box, but it's very easy to add it. First, you need a broker. And as I mentioned, Home Assistant can be your MQTT broker if you don't want to maintain a separate machine. And it's very easy to make Home Assistant your broker through just a few mouse clicks. No Linux scripts or YAML required. To use Home Assistant as your broker, you simply go to Settings, Add-ons, and then down here to your Add-on Store, and you'll see Mosquito Broker listed as an official add-on. Select that. Now, obviously, I already have this installed, but there'll be an Install option. There's plenty of documentation, but I do recommend that you add a dedicated user this is what your external devices will use to log in and connect to the broker. And to do that, you can either add them through the normal Home Assistant a People and User section, or you can come over here to the Configuration. On the Configuration page, under the Logins, you can simply add a user and password for your external devices to be able to connect to the broker. Now, there are other options here, but unless you have a special situation, you probably don't need to change anything. The thing that you do want to note here is this network port. And by default for MQTT is 1883, unless you're using encryption, in which case is 8883. If you made any changes to your configuration file, you will need to come back in here and restart the add-on if you'd already started it. But now that that's done, your broker is up and running, and you have all the information needed for any external devices to connect to the broker. That includes the IP address, which in this case is going to be the same as your Home Assistant IP the default port of 1883 unless you changed it, and the ID and password that you created for these devices to connect. Now do note that creating an ID and password is optional. You can use any of your existing users or logins to Home Assistant to connect, but it's probably a good idea to create a dedicated user for your MQTT devices. That takes care of the broker, but whether you're using the Home Assistant add-on or a standalone broker, you still need to install the Home Assistant MQTT integration. And to add integrations, we once again go to our settings, this time to Devices and Services. And we can come down here in the corner and say Add Integration. And we can simply search for MQTT. And we see it have a number of different options here, but 
Unless you have a special need, just select the generic MQTT. I already have that configured, but if it's your first time, it's going to pop up a configuration screen. Now, since I'm using the MQTT add-on Home Assistant, it actually filled all this information out for me. But if you're using an external broker, just take that information we talked about before, and enter in the IP address of your broker, port, username, and password, and click Next. Now this has to do with things like MQTT discovery and uh, birth and will messages. As a general rule, unless you have special needs, you don't need to change anything on this screen. Just accept all the defaults and click submit. Okay, we've got everything set up on the Home Assistant side, but now how do we use Home Assistant to actually talk to these external MQTT devices? First thing you're gonna to need to know are the expected topics and example payloads. Now, if you're using a pre-built device or someone else's code, those should be documented somewhere. And of course, if you're creating your own device, you can specify your own topics and payloads. But once those are known, there are a couple different ways we can use Home Assistant to communicate with these devices. There are two primary ways to communicate with MQTT devices in Home Assistant. You can create MQTT entities or use automations. Now, currently in Home Assistant, creating MQTT entities requires YAML. To receive data, like for an external sensor, you specify a state topic to listen to. Whenever data is received on that topic, the sensor will be updated with the value of the payload. For something like a switch or a light that can both send and receive data, you can add a command topic to send data to the external device in addition to the state topic for receiving data. And when using automations, you can specify a trigger with an MQTT platform for receiving data. When data is received on the specified topic, the trigger will fire and you can specify what actions to take, including copying the payload value to something like a helper entity. To send data, you use the MQTT Publish Service in the Automation Action, including specifying the topic and the payload data to send. And of course, with automations, you can also use the UI Editor to create your automations as opposed to using YAML. Now, that's very quick and doesn't contain a lot of detail, but you can see the full details of sending and receiving MQTT data in Home Assistant, including a lot of additional examples in this video on how to integrate MQTT devices. So earlier I mentioned building your own device, and if you're doing that, how do you add MQTT to your custom device so that it can integrate with Home Assistant? And as I talked about earlier, MQTT is supported in nearly every modern language out there. I'm showing Arduino C++ and Python here, but the process would be similar using just about any other type of language. In both cases, we're going to import an MQTT library into our project. And in both cases, we're going to connect to our MQTT broker. And again, we're going to use those four same pieces of information, the name or the IP address of our broker, the port, a user ID, and a password. Then we simply use a subscribe function to subscribe to a topic or topics that we want to listen for. We can publish a message by using a publish function where we just indicate the topic and the payload that we wish to publish. And then we need to have some kind of callback handler for any messages that we do receive to the topics that we're subscribed on. In that case, we can just extract the payload from that message and then do something with it. Again, it works almost identical regardless of language. While using code like this works well for integrating your devices into your own Home Assistant, it does have a couple of drawbacks. First, you still have to manually create all of those MQTT entities in YAML on the Home Assistant side, and each entity is more or less standalone. They're not grouped together under a given device. And if you decide to share your code or your project with others, they must also manually create all those MQTT entities, and you'll probably need to provide documentation on the specific topics and types of payloads to allow other users to do that. But by taking advantage of something called Home Assistant MQTT Discovery, you can add a little bit of code to your device and have those devices and all of their entities discovered automatically in Home Assistant with zero YAML and no configuration by you or other users. To take advantage of Home Assistant's MQTT Discovery and have all your entities automatically discovered in Home Assistant, you simply publish a specific payload on a special topic for each entity. This special topic begins with Home Assistant, then a domain like light, sensor, or switch, a unique ID, and then ends with config. Here's an example for a switch. And when you have the Home Assistant MQTT integration installed, Home Assistant will listen for messages on this topic. When a message is received, it will use the information in the payload to create the entity automatically. Now the payload must be a serialized JSON format and contain key value pairs just like if the entity was being defined in YAML, specifying things like the entity name, state topic, unit of measurement, and other properties for the entity. 
Then your device simply publishes this message one time, such as during the setup process, and then Home Assistant will take the message and automatically add the entity, no manual YAML or configuration needed in Home Assistant. And what's more, if you add a nested object to your JSON payload with the device information and each entity you add via discovery uses the same device name and identifier, Home Assistant will create a single device with all of the related entities automatically. Now, if you want to know more about how to implement MQTT discovery on your devices, this video has complete details and multiple examples of adding both entities and devices via discovery. So that's a quick high level overview of Home Assistant and MQTT. Again, check out those other videos if you want to dive into a particular topic in more detail, as those will include complete how to and additional step by step examples. I'll be back again soon with more videos on DIY electronics and Home Assistant. But until that time, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.